Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we explore budget-friendly standard or modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at Flame of Keld Red in Standard, a mono-red aggro slash burn deck, taking advantage of the Flame of Keld saga from Dominaria, a two-man enchantment that when it enters a battlefield on its first chapter forces you to discard your hand, which is quite the disadvantage, but since we are such a low-curve deck with so many cheap cards, we're trying to empty your hand as soon as possible, and then hopefully we haven't drawn a second copy of the Flame of Keld, and when we play the Flame of Keld we don't have to discard anything. Then on the second chapter, after we take our draw step on the following turn, we'll get to draw two additional cards, so the Flame of Keld helps us look for more action to try and finish off our opponent. And as if that weren't enough, on the third chapter, if a red source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus two to that permanent or player instead, so suddenly all our burn spells and red creatures are supercharged and we'll be able to deal a ton of damage out of nowhere. So if you compare this version of Monorad to a more regular version of Monorad, the major difference of course is that we have a lower curve, fewer lands, and of course the addition of Flame of Keld, which is kind of our trump card in the matchup. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have a ton of them. We have a total of 16 1-drop creatures, plus 4 shocks, and 4 wizards lightning that can also cost 1 mana, so lots of 1-drops as you'll see. So we've got 4 copies of Bowman Courier, which is also a great card in a low-curve deck that's trying to empty its hand quickly, since a 1-mana 1 1-1 one -one creature with haste, that whenever it attacks we get to exile a card face down underneath it, and then for 1 red mana we can sacrifice a Courier, discard our hand, and then draw all the cards that have been exiled with the Bowman Courier, so that's another great way to refuel our hand to look for more burn spells to finish off our opponents. Then we also have 4 copies of Fanatical Firebrand, 1 mana 1-1 one -one with haste, that we can also tap and sacrifice to deal 1 damage to any target. We also have 4 copies of Gitu Lava Runner, 1 mana 1-2 one wizard, that says as long as there are 2 or more instant and or sorcery cards in our graveyard, the Lava Runner gets plus 1 plus 0 and has haste. So if we have enough instants and sorceries in our graveyard, a 1 mana 2-2 two two with haste, that's also a wizard, which is important since we're playing 4 copies of Wizard's Lightning. Then we also have 4 copies of Shock as a nice cheap burn spell, 1 mana to deal 2 damage to any target. And 4 copies of a Soul Scar Mage, another Wizard, 1 mana 1-2 one with Prowess, so gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, whenever we cast a non-creature spell, which includes instants, sorceries, but also enchantments, like the Flame of Keld. And Soul Scar Mage also says if a sorcery control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, put that many minus 1 minus 1 counters on that creature instead, which means we can kind of turn our burn spells into ways of shrinking down the opponent's creatures if they're very large, and also combines very nicely with Goblin Chain Whirler, as you'll know by now. Then we move on to our 2-drops, where we have 4 copies of Earthshaker Kenra, 2 mana 2-1 two with haste. When it enters a battlefield, target creature with power less than or equal to Earthshaker Kenra's power can't block this turn, so makes for a nice attacker to maybe follow up a Bowman Courier if the opponent presents a blocker for it, so that the 1-drop we played can keep attacking past the blocker. And Earthshaker Kenra also has Eternalize for 6 mana, which is not going to come up as often as in the normal Monorad version, since we're only playing 20 lands, but it could still happen, so for 6 mana we get to exile the Kenra from our graveyard to make a 4-4 token that's a zombie, that will have the same Andrew's Battlefield ability as the Kenra, so we can keep attacking. And then we also have 2 copies of Akari Zav, Skyship Raider, 2 mana 1-3 with first strike and manas. When she attacks we also get to make a 2-1 red monkey creature token that will be joining her in the attack. And in the Flame of Keld version of the deck, Kari Zav is even better than in the normal Monorad version, since if we get to the third chapter of Flame of Keld where red sources deal to additional damage, then both Kari Zav and the monkey token are red sources, so they'll both be dealing 2 additional damage, which adds up. Then we have 4 copies of Lightning Strike, 2 mana to deal 3 damage to any target at instant speed, so another great burn spell. And of course the 4 copies of Flame of Keld, 4 copies of Wizard's Lightning, and we have Soul Scar Mage and Gitu Lava Runner as Wizards, so that the Wizard's Lightning only costs 1 mana to deal 3 damage to any target, otherwise it's 3 mana. 
And last but not least, only two copies of Goblin Chain Whirler, 3 mana, 3-3 three, three, with first strike. When he enters the battlefield, we get to deal one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. So it combines very nicely with Soul Scar Mage, since all the damage you deal to the opponent's creatures will transform into minus one, minus one counters. Also combines nicely with the third chapter of Flame of Geld, since now the one damage is turned into three damage instead. So that also adds up. And the reason we're only playing two copies of Goblin Chain Whirler is simply because we are such a low curve deck with only 20 mountains. We won't be guaranteed to have three mana on turn three, so we want to limit the number of expensive cards in our deck. And also because of Flame of Geld, you don't want to be stuck with a bunch of expensive cards in your hand and not be able to deploy Flame of Geld, because then you'll have to discard all of those cards. Then moving on to the sideboard, we have one additional mountain for when we want to bring in some more expensive cards out of the sideboard. We have four copies of Chandra's Defeat against opposing red decks. We have four copies of a Braid if we want to deal with artifacts or want to have access to more spot removal. We have two copies of Anchor of Crasher, which we can swap out with a Goblin Chain Whirler against the more controlling decks, where the one damage against creatures isn't very relevant, and we would rather have a three mana, three power haste creature. We have two copies of Find with Fire that we can bring in against decks with large creatures, especially cards like Lara Dawnbringer, that can be an issue for the deck. And then two more copies of Goblin Chain Whirler for when we're playing against decks with lots of one toughness creatures or expect uh, board to stall out a bit and want to combine Goblin Chain Whirler with uh, Soul Scar Mage to shrink down the opposing creatures. So that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. This is a pretty good hand. Lots of action, including Flame of Keld, Decent Curve, and up against the Blue Black of some variety. All right, double Flame of Keld is not where we want to be. But I guess that's the cost of playing four copies. And I guess it's still okay against a counter spell, I guess. Alright, tap land from the opponents. So here we want to attack for one. And then play Karizev. Now that they don't have Essence Scatter mana up. And if they have Fatal Push, they have Fatal Push. Alright, no Fatal Push. Ooh, Grixis, Sulphur Falls makes an appearance. And Ascanta, alright, opponents tapped out, they didn't have Fatal Push last turn, so I'm guessing they don't have it. So, got free rain for a turn, so let's just fire off some burn spells. To enable Prowess. And get in there. And next turn we have Flame of Keld, to enable Prowess again and to help us refuel. If they counter it we have a second copy, so that would even be in our favor if they do. Although I guess we could still draw something we want to play for the turn. So we'll see. Alright, definitely in a great spot here. Pwn's already down to 8. So we've got some good creatures in play. And our opponent's just going to concede. Alright, didn't even get to play our Flame of Kelds. Pwn didn't really get to see that we were on the Flame of Keld version of the deck. Which might also change their sideboarding somewhat. But against Control, I just like taking out Chain Whirlers and bringing in two Ancrop Crashers, and that's it. All right, this hand looks okay. Turn one Courier, turn two Kenra, and point with another tap line on turn one, so no Fatal Push on the horizon. And looks like we'll have a turn three Crasher lined up as well. So a nice little curve going. And turn two Chart, of course, all right. So maybe they're some sort of Godfarer's Gift version instead. Just discard Fetid Pool, so who knows. Alright, Karizev is not a bad draw either. So would we rather Karizev or play Kenra? I think I prefer Kenra. Just make sure we get to deal the damage right away. And I don't think our opponent's going to have too many blockers where the ability from the Kenra is going to be relevant in the future. And then next turn, instead of going Crasher into a potential counter spell, we could go Karizev plus Firebrand and save the Crasher for later. Alright, blink of an eye on Bowman Courier. It's uh, definitely fine. Opponent's got one mana up, so Fatal Push doesn't kill Crasher, but they could have something like a Magma Spray, which would answer the Ancrop Crasher. So instead, we could just go a triple one drop, which I don't hate. Play around Magma Spray better than uh, if we were to play the Crasher. Alright, no Magma Spray. 
So we'll get to add a Soul Scar Mage. We are a bit weak to a Sweeper effect now, I guess. But then we still get to follow up with a Hasty Crasher, which is okay. And yep, there's a Sweltering Sun's opponent. Did need double red for that, so not sure if they drew it or already had it lined up. But we still have a decent follow up here in Ancrop Crasher. Put them to nine. We've got three points of burn in hand. And a Karizav is pretty good as well. So still don't hate our spot despite the 4 for 1 Sweltering Suns. Maybe could have kept the Soulscar Mage in hand there. Alright, Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Can finish off the Ancrop Crasher. I think we saved the Wizard's Lightning to point at the opponent's face as opposed to point it at Chandra. I guess I could fire it off now, so that they can't uh, counter it. Makes sense. And then we have five lands in place, so one away from Eternalizing Earthshaker Kenra. So both lands and spells are good draws, which is a nice place to be in. And Noxious Geralk, yeah, that's a pretty nice one here. Kills Karizav and gains some life back. So they're back up to nine, and the Earthshaker Kenra can't prevent the Geralk from blocking. So that was a, a great one from the opponent, definitely not one I expected. All right, but Flame of Keld is pretty good as well. So we're definitely putting up a fight. There's Search for Ascanta, that's okay. And Chandra pluses for mana. What is this? A Combustible Gear Hulk, wow, okay. Let's see here, opponent's gonna hit us down to 13 this turn. Yeah, I don't think we can afford to take the damage, so we'll give them the three cards. We're probably dead no matter what here, but taking the damage feels pretty suicidal here. So we'll go to 13. And Gitu Lava Runner. Alright, we actually drew some nice action here. Lava Runner into Wizard's Lightning, into another Flame of Keld. I think that's better than sandbagging the Lightning to try and point it upstairs. I think we just take out the Chandra here, or we could point the Lightning at our opponent. I guess since we died to Chandra dealing 2 damage and the Gearhulk's attacking us, we should probably just take out Chandra here. Since it's pretty likely their opponent found a removal spell with all the cards they drew. And then we'll play another Flame of Keld. Next turn we get the third chapter from the first Flame of Keld and we'll draw three cards total. So we'll have to cobble together some burn spells to hope to finish off our opponents. And there's Scarab God, that's okay I guess. And Magma Spray on the Lava Runner, so had we not killed Chandra we would have died right now. Alright, so need to be pretty lucky here to find the right cards to win. But it's definitely possible. Just a bunch of burn spells and we'll do it. Bowman Curious is not where we want to start. And Shock and Kenra. Alright, so almost, but not quite. So yeah, we can play Kenra, play Courier. Shock deals 4 to our opponent, but uh, Courier's damage is not doubled. And there's no way we can survive another turn here. So I guess we can hope our opponent makes a weird block somehow. I guess never mind, actually made a mistake here. We still had an out. If we attack with the Courier, sacrifice it and draw exactly Lightning Strike, then we could have still cast Lightning Strike and Shock and that's 5 plus 4 is 9. So yeah, playing the, the Kenra here was definitely a mistake. But let's see here if we were gonna draw the Lightning Strike for the win. So let's attack with both. Alright, opponent had a Magma Spray anyways for the Bowman Courier, so that uh, line was not gonna work. Fair enough. And Shock could technically also kill the Gear Hulk, but that's not going to be relevant here. Alright, so Scarab God takes some damage, and uh, that's it. Alright, so let's move on to game 3. Seeing all those Magma Sprays is a bit worrisome. Don't think we want to bring in the Braids to kill the Gear Hulk, since if we get to that point of the game, we probably already lost. Not much we can do about Scarab God, don't think we want Fight with Fire to kill him. Just need to try and be uh, faster, hope they have a slow draw with lots of expensive cards. Maybe play around Sweltering Suns a bit better. And uh, yeah, run it back. Would like to be on the play. 
and can't keep a Nolander, unfortunately. This hand's okay, and yep, I'll keep a Flame of Keld on top. So, given the Flame of Keld on top, I think I play Firebrand first. This way we can play Soulscar Mage at a later point to take advantage of the Prowess trigger with the Flame of Keld. Do need a third land for the Crasher, but hopefully we'll get there. Opponent down to 16. Not a bad start. Just a tap land, but they could have a Magma Spray here. Or a Fatal Push. And it's gonna be a Fatal Push on the Kenra. Come on, land. Alright, I'll take a Courier. So again, we will be overextending into a Sweltering Suns, but... For opponent to use Fatal Push or Kenra, they might not have the... Sweltering Suns on 3. And they also need an untapped rat source, which is not a guarantee. Alright, there's the untapped rat source. Let's see if they have the sweltering suns yet again. Nope, champion of wits. Alright, so far so good. Could also kill it with a firebrand if we want to. Bone discards island and blink. And the third mountain. Alright, so we could exert crasher attack with everyone, or we could not exert a crasher and just use a Firebrand to kill the Champion of Wits. The problem there is that if our opponent's going to use a removal spell on the Crasher or a Sweeper, then we will kind of have given up on one point of damage with the Firebrand. It's uh, definitely an interesting spot. Could also make the argument for Flame of Keld keep up mana for Sacrificing Courier, but that seems worse than playing the Crasher here. So if our opponent had a Sweeper, they would have played it last turn, but they could have drawn into it with the Champion of Wits, I guess. I think I like exerting the Crasher. Get value out of it right away, keep the Firebrand in play. And keeping the Fanatical Firebrand with the Flame of Keld is also a nice combo, since you can ping to deal 3 damage as opposed to just 1. Alright, there's land 4. And they kick it blink of an eye on the Bowman Courier. Alright, that's fine. And Earthshaker to draw, alright. Still probably gonna hold off on playing the Flame of Keld since we drew that. And even if they have a Sweeper, they will still be pretty low at 3 life here. And if they don't have a Sweeper, then they're just dead. And they're just dead. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we have both our Chain Warlords in our opening hand, which is a little bit sketchy, but I think this is still a keep. We're on the draw, so we get to see an extra card, hopefully find our third land in time. And uh, turn one, Rigging Runner. Bodes well for the Chain Warlord, but does make for a good blocker against our uh, Bowman Couriers. So I'll just play a Firebrand here, and say go. Don't have to sacrifice it yet but that will clear a path for our bone careers, potentially. And if your opponent attacks for one, I think I take it. The argument for sacrificing Firebrand is that if they have a Chain Whirler on three, we'll lose it, so might as well activate it then. The other argument for using it is if they have more raid creatures, then we should have killed the uh, Rigging Runner before it attacked, but it looks like they don't have anything, All right? So we get to untap, and I think we just jam double courier, hope they don't have Chain Whirler, although... What kind of hand does the opponent keep where they don't have any good turn to play? I guess they could have a Lightning Strike here. So we could split the difference, only play one of them, which is also not amazing. I think we just go for it and hope for the best. And then there's no need to sack Firebrand on the Rigging Runner since our own Chain Warlord is going to take care of that. Alright, so please don't Chain Warlord me. Opponent did nothing with two mana, so... Seems like a Chain Warlord's happening. Yep. At least we'll get to return the favor, but that was definitely painful. Alright, Flame of Kelds, a nice follow-up here once we empty our hand. Four mana. And the Gate to the Afterlife. Alright, so this is the Goblin Gift deck. Makes sense. We'll take three. and Rigging Runner with Raid, the follow-up. Alright, so here we have an interesting play. We could play Soulscar Mage plus Wizard's Lightning, 
and that sets up our chain whirler better as well since then they'll get the minus one minus one counter so yeah i don't hate that play soul scar tank with chain whirler and then we can lightning the chain whirler from the opponent or we can do something else with it but for now we can say go Comet Celebrant, all right, that's okay. It's gonna die to our Chain Whirler. All right, let's uh, block Radiant Runner and then fire off the Wizard's Lightning on the Chain Whirler. Enable Prowess and get to eat the Radiant Runner as well, discarding a Comet Celebrant, all right. Opponent is setting up their gate nicely. So yeah, the opponent already has uh, five creatures in the graveyard. If we play Chain Whirler, they get to uh, transform Gate next turn. And they're just gonna do it now. Finish off our Soul Scar Mage. So, yeah, next turn, opponent gets to flip the gate. And with uh, multiple Celebrants in the graveyard, we're probably gonna get comboed out and die a horrible death. I guess we can just keep both Chain Whirlers on defense instead of attacking with them since that way the Celebrants can't really make any profitable attacks. It's uh, probably fine. So yeah, can't really afford to attack. Need to keep both First Strikers on defense and then uh, hope we can somehow draw out of this. So let's see if they get the Comet Celebrant right away or if they go for Chain Warlords first. All right, they go for Celebrants. I guess they could not attack with him. Nope, they do. Yeah, not sure about this. Just get to double block it and our opponent hasn't accomplished anything besides exiling a uh, Celebrant from the graveyard. All right, so now our opponent decides to go with the Chain Warlord instead. They have learned their lesson. And our opponent says go. Get to play Bowen Courier. Flame of Keld. And we could cycle our Bowen Courier essentially here. Seems okay. Find a Kenra. All right. Opponent does get the Celebrant this time around. Still gonna double block the Celebrant, but now our opponent does get to deal some damage with the uh, Chain Warlord. And there's another Chain Warlord. So yeah, now we can't really double block, otherwise we would lose both Chain Warlords. But on the other hand, we also can't afford to take 8, otherwise we're dead. So this is a pretty ugly spot. Alright, I guess we have to double block one of them. Better than chumping one and keeping a 3-3 Chain Warlord, I guess. We'll definitely be boarding in some abrades for this matchup. So we get to draw 2 from Flame of Keld. Alright, those are some cards. So can we even afford to attack here? Don't think we can, since we kind of need to keep all our creatures on defense, otherwise we're dead. And there's a 4-4 Regan Runner. And an Abraid on the Soulscar Mage. Before they did this, we could have chumped one of their 4-4s with Firebrand and then sacrificed it to shrink down the other 4-4, so we only take 3 go to one and still have a potential shot at winning but now that they main phase the abrade we would have to sag the firebrand right away which then doesn't let us block with it so now i think we're dead opponent can attack with both and we're forced to block both and uh yeah there's no combination that gets us out of this all right on to sideboarding against a monorad godfather's gift i like the abrades of course i like Chain Warlord, since their opponent did appear to have lots of one toughness creatures, have to probably bring in a mountain so we can have Chain Warlord more reliably. And then what don't we like? The one toughness creatures definitely are a liability in this matchup, so Bowman Courier can go. And Fanatical Firebrand's also not at its best. So you can see cutting three copies there. Then Chandra's Defeat is uh, probably also worth bringing in. So let's cut another Firebrand. Probably don't need all the defeats though, since it's mostly to kill opposing Chain Warlords. Don't expect our opponent to have stuff like Hazred or Chandra or Glorybringer. 
and it's not amazing against uh, Siege Gang Commander. So I think two copies is probably enough. And then I'll cut a uh, Shock for it. Kenra is also not amazing. I guess a Shock might be better than a Kenra. Try this. I would like to be on the play. And yeah, this uh, burn heavy hand with the braid. Not amazing. Do need to find some creatures to back this up. But I don't think I want to mulligan this. Just because we do have the braid and 10 points of burn, which is a start. Probably have to point some of these at the opponent's creatures first. So land go. And they turn one Ring Runner. Probably not going to shock that one. All right, there's a Flame of Keld. So that's an incentive to try and empty your hand quickly. So might fire off this shock on the Ring Runner after all. We'll see. Yeah, I'll shock it. Probably should have shocked it before it attacked. To prevent a scenario where they play double a Ring Runner with Raid since we only get to shock one of them. Skirk Prospector is probably fine. All right, Mountain's a good draw since I'm gonna make sure we have enough lands where we can empty your hand and then play Flame of Keld. So I'll say go. A Goblin Warchief, all right. I'll let that resolve. And then Shock the Warchief. Could also kill the Prospector to prevent him from ramping out a... Uh, Siege Gang Commander, but that feels kind of bad, so I might just want to Lightning Strike them instead. So I'll take one from the Prospector, and then a Lightning Strike their face. And say go. There's land 4, and another War Chief. Fair enough. I'll Wizard's Lightning that one. Take one, down to 18, and next turn we get to a Braid plus Flame of Keld. Not the ideal set of circumstances would have preferred to have a creature attacking in the meantime. And there's Chain Whirler. All right, draw our own Chain Whirler. And another Braid. So we could wait a turn to play Chain Whirler so it deals 3 damage to everything that seems worth it. So I'll just pass it back. And then we'll take our damage from the opposing Chain Whirler for a turn. Would be great if our opponent played Siege Gang Commander here. But they don't. Let's play Chain Whirler, wipe their board, opponent's gonna braid it. Alright, so we're left with an abrade in hand and uh, 7 lands in play versus the opponent's 6 lands and we're both at 14. So I'm not sure who's favored. Drawing mountains doesn't help. Alright, let's play Karizev. Rigging Runner, it's fine. Don't think I want to waste my braid on it, but now that we drew Flame of Keld, maybe it's fine. Since, yeah, top decked uh, Godfather's Gift or Gates would be pretty scary. But on the other hand, the Rigging Runner does get to block our Monkey token, which I don't think we want to have happen, otherwise we only deal one damage. So it's a bit of a risk, but probably a risk worth taking given that we want to play out the uh, Flame of Keld. All right, get to draw two, find another replacement to braid, and another chain whirler. All right, let's get in there with Karizev, and I think we probably just run out chain whirler now. If uh, he gets to stick in play, still deals five damage by himself, and Karizev also adds up to a lot of damage with Flame of Keld. So let's play chain whirler, and then we still have a braid in case they top deck gate or gift. Alright, opponent has their own chain whirler, that's fine. And a shock to finish off our chain whirler, fair enough. But they're still dead to the Karizev by herself with Flame of Keld. Since uh, Karizev deals 3 damage and a monkey 4, so that's 7 total. And her opponent scoops it up, alright. So, do we want to change anything for game 3? I think I liked our sideboard plan for the most part. All right, so we're ready for game three. This hand seems a bit land heavy. Doesn't have any braids, just a Kenra. I think this is a mulligan. 
All right, I'll keep this. I've got a Flame of Kel to refuel, some uh, removal spells, and our opponent also mulliganing to five here. So do we want to keep a mountain? Don't really need it, but it would be nice for being able to fire off these wizard slindings. So I guess I'll keep it on top and hope to not draw any additional lands for the time being. All right, turn Prospector. Don't think we need to shock that quite yet. I'll take my one damage. All right, there's another mountain, so already regretting keeping land on top. Lightning Strike, end of turn. Chain Whirler, yep. So I guess we can shock the Prospector, or can wait until it attacks, I guess. And then we have the Lightning to answer Chain Whirler. As we keep drawing lands, yeah, maybe should have bottomed the mountain there. But then again, if we were never going to draw a third land, we were unable to play these Wizard's Lightnings, and we would not have been able to play Flame of Geld. Goblin Warchief. It's going to Wizard's Lightning the Chain Warver still. Alright, Karizev is a good draw. But uh, let's see here. Do we play Karizev or do we play Lightning? I think we still play Karizev. And then next turn we can Flame of Geld plus Lightning. And Karizev could technically block uh, the Warchief. Would be bad if our opponent goes to land into Siege Gang Commander. All right, instead of Gate to the Afterlife. But still only two creatures in a graveyard. So don't hate our spot here. I think I'm still okay using the Lightning on the Warchief. Even though that does let them trigger the Gate. Opponent discards Gift. One card in hand currently. And Flame of Keld. At the moment we're slightly ahead. But that can quickly change. And Bowman Courier, which they can also sacrifice to trigger the gate. Definitely want to find an abrade as soon as possible. Opponent's going to sacrifice it right away. Discards a mountain. Oof, that was painful. Definitely drew more mountains than uh, average this time around. Found a total of 9 lands in the top 14 cards. That's uh, a lot above average. And another one. Yep, yeah, that's not according to plan. So can we even afford to attack into the Rigging Runner? Opponent's got one, two, three, four creatures in the graveyard. Five if they block with the Rigging Runner. But I guess they would have to block Karizev instead of the Monkey token. So I think I still attack. Alright, they block the Monkey token, so we still get in for three thanks to Karizev and Flame of Keld. And they don't get to put a creature in the graveyard. Mm, Skirk Prospector means they now get to sacrifice both goblins and transform gate into gift. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We went through one-fourth of our deck, but we haven't seen an abrade. Otherwise we could have punished the opponent for sacking their entire board here. Yep. And there's a Celebrant. Which is gonna start a chain. And yep, we should be dead now. Alright, so got a bit unlucky in the last game to draw a few too many lands. But the Flame of Kel definitely looked pretty good here in these mirror matches where you both trade a bunch of resources and then we get to refuel with Flame of Keld and maybe get a super powerful turn where we get to deal extra damage. Especially Chain Whirler dealing three damage to everything. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand looks pretty good. Turn one courier, turn two Kenra, some burn spells, and firebrands. It is pretty weak to Chain Whirler, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Alright, turn one Blooming Marsh, no land or elves. Let's turn out to Kenra still. And no fatal push, alright, so far so good. Got some pressure in place, some removal spells in case uh, they land some scary creature like Winding Constrictor. Alright, no turn to play. And Chain Whirler to draw. Get in there and play Chain Whirler. And turn 3, Gift of Paradise. Alright, so we're putting some sort of uh, ramp deck. 
it seems like. But uh, we can almost empty our hand here and then activate Bowman Courier to refuel, so don't mind our position whatsoever. Can just hang on to our burn spells if our opponent goes to play a board wipe. We can Lightning Strike and then Sacrifice Courier to draw four cards. End of turn, I think I still fire off the Lightning Strike, just in case they're saving a removal spell for Courier to use in our draw step. We get to free up some mana. All right, doesn't look like it. Let's play Firebrand, attack with everyone. I guess we could also keep the Firebrands back in case our opponent likes playing a Settler Wreckage from their Gift of Paradise or something. But it doesn't look to be necessary, so we're up against a green-black, what looks to be a ramp deck. So I think we want to take out Chain Warlords to make room for Crashers. And uh, I think that's about it. The rest seems fine to me. Alright, so we're on the draw. It's a one-lander that's a little sketchy here. But we do have a ton of one-drops, and if we ever draw a second land, we're good to go. So I think on the draw, this is a keep. I found a mountain right away, so that's nice. think I'm fine leading with Soulscar Mage here. I'm fine if it gets Fatal Pushed, and uh, if not, we have a creature with prowess in play with multiple ways to trigger him. Alright, opponent plays second land, says go. And ooh, Courier is an interesting twist. So now I think I like going Courier plus Firebrand as opposed to Kenra. Alright. Ooh, Fungal Infection even. Shrinking down Soulscar Mage and blocking it. And they get to hang on to the Sapperling token. Did not expect that, but it's pretty effective here. They could have even killed Firebrand and then uh, blocked the Courier for a nice 2 for 1. But they really valued getting rid of Soulscar Mage. And the Sapperling attacks, wow. Do they have another Fungal Infection or a Board Wipe? Right, naturalize on Bowman Courier. That's uh, interesting. So the Kenra could have prevented the Sapling from blocking, but I think we still just run out the Kenra here over Lava Runner plus Shock. So get him for three, put him down to fifteen, and would like to find a third land so we get to empty our hand a bit faster. Sapling stays on defense. And for three mana, it's going to be another Gift of Paradise. All right. So our opponent's setting up for a big play next turn. And we'll have to decide how we handle this Sapling token. I kind of like just uh, killing it with Firebrand and then playing Crasher. And get in with the Kenra as well, without having to exert. So our opponent down to 13. And we've got some pretty good leftovers in hand. No second instance or sorcery yet for the Lava Runner, but I'm sure we'll find one soon enough. So our opponent could cast something like an Hour of Promise, and they already have a Desert in play, but we could then shock one of the zombie tokens and uh, exert on the second one to still get in. And yep, there's the Hour of Promise. Getting another Hash of Oasis and Ifner Deadlands, which can also take out the Crasher next turn, so exerting it is not a very big cost. Yeah, let's uh, shock one of the zombies. And then we get to play both one drops as well. So our opponent will take six down to seven. And then we have Flame of Keld as a follow up, which will hopefully draw us into some goodies. And this is 6 mana for Carnage Tyrant. Alright, that's a pretty big roadblock. So, let's just uh, empty our hand here. Play Flame of Kel, try and go wide. And fully take advantage of the third chapter. Opponent might use the Ifner Deadlands next turn to take out the Crasher. Or they could have a Sweeper, which would be pretty devastating here. Carnage Tyrant attacking is not a good sign. But we can't really make any profitable blocks, so we'll have to take it and expect something like a Golden Demise here. Although I guess then the zombie would have also attacked. Alright, instead another Hour of Promise also makes sense. This uh, draw 2 from Flame of Keld better be good. 
Another Crasher is not bad. And then Land and Lava Runner. Do have to be mindful that we don't die on the Crackback, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So yeah, let's play Crasher and we can exert both of them. Could also not exert a Crasher and then save everything for next turn on the third chapter. But that might be a little bit ambitious since then they just keep the Carnage Tyrant back and then kill a Crasher with the Ifner Deadlands. So we'd rather get in the damage while we can. So let's get in there. What is this? Cast down? Yep, cast down on a Crasher. Alright, now I think we're gonna change our uh, plan a little bit since if we exert a Crasher now, then opponent still has two blockers. And we can only push through three damage or four damage, which doesn't seem worth it since then we can die on the crank back with all these deserts. So yeah, I think we wait and then try to attack next turn with the third chapter on our side. And drawing some sort of burn spell would be amazing since that would turn on all the lava runners as well. And we can also sack the bone courier to get to fresh cards. And we might even do that before damage, in case we can find another instant. And never to return on the Bowman Courier, alright. Bowman can also make an additional zombie. Ooh, Fatal Push on the Crasher is not gonna work, since they didn't have uh, Revolt. Could have been a misclick, or they wanted to use the Deadlands first, and then use the Fatal Push. Alright, Doomfall is gonna force us to sack a Lava Runner, I guess. And Carnage Tyrant gets in. I think we take it and then hope for the best. Come on, Burn Spell. Soulscar Mage instead. So, how are things looking like now? We can exert here. Opponent's got two blockers. Block, block. Still take six. So, it should still be lethal unless uh, missing something. So, yeah, let's uh, get in there. So, yeah, the. The misstep on the Fatal Push might have cost them here. Or they could have uh, kept back the Carnage Tyrant to block with for a turn. To wait out the Flame of Keld. Alright, so our opponent takes 7. And Flame of Keld gets the job done. Alright, awesome. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.